Hey everybody, welcome to Southland's Parenting Podcast, where we are trying to impress upon parents what must be impressed upon our kids, because you cannot give what you do not have. Good job, guys. I was about to take a drink, sorry. Veterans, you're about to take a drink out of your, your hot plate mug. A fancy mug. 135 degrees. Uh, Highly recommend. While some of us are talking about cold plunging, you're just trying to get as warm as possible yeah. mm-hmm. every moment of every day. Mm-hmm. So good for you for being a contrarian. I believe in the power of a good cup of coffee. Well, I do too. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you when a good cup of coffee tastes really good after you've sat. I, and- bet, it <laughs> I bet it does. I bet it does. There we go. People are going to start hating the hype. Oh, I'm joined by some of my favorite people here today and uh, podcasting veterans uh-uh. at this point. I mean, oh, just yeah. veterans. You've gotten so veteran, Jess, that you're starting to dictate our furniture around here. That's true. You're trying to change things around, mm-hmm. and apparently you th- don't like the way the men have decorated, and so <laughs> you're trying to... I had to wear can a boa we, last week. Can we put decorated week. in quotes? <laughs> you don't like what we've done with the place. Yes, I don't know so why. Nice. Check that out. We used to have this Dark really manly backdrop for locker That's room, right. and that yeah. all went away. I didn't even ask for that. They yeah. just did it. You yeah. know? Listen, so, I removed the plant from the table. You're welcome. Was there a plant on there the table? There was a plant was on the table. Was it a plant or a candle? Because for the women's pod- podcast, we try to like, well, there's a candle too, oh, okay. but we also have Smell a plant. Good. See? I'm so unaware of my surroundings. I had no idea that we had... You can just shove no, me no, in a closet. You, you've not had one sitting there. But, <laughs> oh, that's but it good was to know. Really. I was yeah, like, yeah, how did yeah. I miss that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel like I, I was just going to let it ride. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, parenting hey, podcast. Not un- as unaware as I thought I was, apparently. So we're officially, this is the first one of season two that we're recording how right about now. That? Season oh, okay. one has been releasing as we speak. I was just informed yeah. right before we started recording that the third one yeah. went out. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so this is this is the first one of season two. And so we're excited to be here. One of the things I wanted to talk about was just the role of the church um, in the lives of our kids and in the in our families. And so um, you you and I have done youth ministry mm-hmm. before. Um, yeah. I worked with children like uh, preschool all the way through fifth grade for yeah. several years. And then I worked with high school students. I skipped right over those middle school <laughs> students intentionally. Yeah. Uh, I did middle school. Man, you got to be special. Like you've got to. Yeah. It's got to be a calling to yeah. want to work with middle school kids. And so yeah. Yeah. I did middle school camps for a while, and that was about as close as I got to middle school ministry. So, um, and then you've got kids mm-hmm. and you've been around the youth ministry and mm-hmm. things like that, been around the church for a long time. And so we've experienced it from both being uh, staff people at a church and working with a lot of parents and a lot of kids, and then also being parents with kids ourselves. And yeah. so uh, while we are far from experts, uh, we mm-hmm. do at least have some experience in this. In this realm. So right out of the gate, I mean, what are the things over the years that you think it's important for parents to understand, maybe first and foremost, about what the church is not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, for those of you who had do, do children's ministry, it's not babysitting. Yeah, or child care. <laughs> or child yeah. care. If you really want to make a children pastor, somebody who works in children's <laughs> ministry, upset, just refer to Angry. it as child care. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Especially when they put in an enormous amount of time, energy, ever, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into mm-hmm. trying to do far more than simply just keep your kids breathing mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. before you come pick yeah. them up after the church service is over. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not child care. The, the second thing is that it's not the pre- predominant spiritual vehicle to mm-hmm. invest in, in your children. Mm-hmm. We're to supplement. Mm-hmm. You know, it's our job as parents. That's Scripture's really clear. We may go there and talk about that. We've talked about that some. And so, and I'm I'm thankful for for children's ministry. I'm thankful for student ministry. Uh, I'm thankful. I've got a kid that's in Christian school, but it's not their job. It's my mm-hmm. job. It's our job to invest, to pray for, show them Jesus, model it for them. And and I'm really thankful for the 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 the, the other resources that are around to supplement what we do. And so, mm-hmm. I've got girls, and it's, it's awesome to watch them see strong godly women whether that's like Jess that are singing or leading in lots of different capacities uh, I love it when you know I find out that you know Matt Williams came in to speak at middle mm-hmm. school he's investing in my daughter you mm-hmm. know it's such a fun thing to, you know I just started fight club and so there's all, there's some there's some students in there and I, I was stopped on the way down by Danette and her son's a part he's a senior mm-hmm. And man, it's so fun to get to invest in, you know, it's, it, we get to turn around and help our, even our staff kids that way. But, it, but at, at the end of the day, it, it, mm-hmm. it really does land on yeah. us. And yeah. so how do we rightly leverage the church, but know that it's secondary, not primary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I, it, what kids learn at church is a reinforcement of what they've learned at home. 
that's the way that I, I kind of see it. So we're, we're teaching the same things and we're saying the same things, except they're getting us nonstop yeah. and they're living it out. And then when they come on Wednesdays or Sundays or whatever that is, it's getting reinforced by what yeah. they're hearing and the stories they're hearing. And then it's also a good vehicle for a biblical community. I yeah, think. ideally yes. it's complementing and supplementing mm-hmm. yeah. what's already going on at home. And so every now and then we'll deal with parents over the years that have different perceptions of what we should be doing yeah. at the church building yeah. during service times <laughs> for their kids. Yeah. And so... Oftentimes people will think this should be the place where they're getting everything they need to know right. about the Bible, about right. Christianity. All of it should just be being done by you guys. And if it's not, then you're not doing your job. And then right. oftentimes, mm-hmm. you know, when that question or that statement gets brought to a staff person around here, they're going to actually know it's your job. Yeah. And we're trying to supplement and yeah. complement what we hope that you're doing right. At and home. even equip them as best we can. I yes. mean, that's part of this podcast. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. part of the groups that we have that are existing, all that kind of stuff. I mean, even even some of the series that we do where we end up with a PG-13 mm-hmm. sign that sits outside of mm-hmm. all of our auditoriums, you know, the reality is is that whatever we're going to talk about, we hope that they've probably gotten there first. But if they haven't, you know what? Yeah. This is also a great second space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, hey, if we got to follow up as a parent to what what's... I mean, mm-hmm. we've had to do that with our kids, too, on mm-hmm. specific things, but... But this is a great second space where you can find truth and, and get understanding and know who Jesus is and what he what he what he cares about as it relates to our lives or our purity or our relationships or, or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I, there's also a sense in which parents need to remember that when we're trying to teach your kids here at church, we have to consider kids that are coming from homes that aren't Christian. Yeah. We have to consider kids that are coming from all kinds of home situations. And so our goal is is to try to reach those kids and introduce them to Jesus. It is not so that, you know, at the end of two years, they're able to, you know, quote, you know, every yeah. Deuteronomy, every, yeah, everything yeah. in the Bible. Or right. we're, not, we're not only trying to give them knowledge, we're trying to introduce them to Jesus. And so sometimes Christian parents will get frustrated that we're not doing enough or getting deep enough or fill in the blank with whatever catchphrase. And they lose sight of the fact that we have a lot of lost kids that end up here. They come visit with their friends. They get invited by their friends, things like that. And so we're always trying to remember them. And our assumption is, and it may not always be the right assumption, but our assumption is based on understanding what the responsibility of Mm -hmm. Christian parents is, as we see in the Bible, is that you're taking the primary responsibility Mm -hmm. to shape and direct and impress these things upon your kids, Mm -hmm. not us. We're just coming alongside of you. And so if you're expecting something of us that we're, you don't think we're providing, that's because we're, we're two ships Mm -hmm. sailing in the night, you know, (laughs) notice how I enunciated that really well. So I didn't accidentally, you know, misspeak or something like that. Who would do that? (laughs) Who would do that? that? That's that's old. That's 43. (laughs) When, when you consider like with your kids, the distinction between going to church and being the church, and I'm going to read a scripture here Mm -hmm. as you guys are kind of thinking about and formulating your responses what are the things that you feel like are important to convey to your kids? And then how do you demonstrate that distinction? Because first Corinthians 12, just one of the you know parts of the new Testament that talks about the church. And I won't read the whole big long section, but the body is a unit though it's made up of many parts. And though all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. So the metaphor that we're given of the church is that it's a a body of believers and we're all playing different parts Mm -hmm. and different roles. And so as you think about what is it we've been trying to convey to our kids about the distinction between going to church, which is what most people talk about. We go to church or we go to that church or we go to this church versus being the church. What what stands out? Yeah, I think, I mean, going to church can easily be a box you check every yep. week. And I'm not saying that it is for tons of people, but it can be mm-hmm. very easily. And backing up a little bit to something you said before, if that's all that we're doing, we're really not growing our own relationship with yep. the Lord, much less allowing our kids the opportunity mm-hmm. to grow theirs because we're not modeling for them what it looks like to live out our faith. Living out our faith the rest of the time, I feel like, is being the church. Yeah. That's what that is. And it looks different. Um, we all serve in different capacities. We all have different gifts. Um, so 
it, it may look different, but us actually doing the 24 seven work of living out our faith yeah. and modeling that and loving others and those kinds of things and, and discipling our children, that's being the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's easy to go to church. I mean, there's plenty of people that, that do go to churches every weekend and they go and they sit for an hour and they check the box and it feels good. And the problem is, is that we don't drag what it is that we, whatever it is that we, we got from there, we don't drag it into our everyday lives. And then the other side of it is, is that, hey, this whole thing with Jesus, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's interesting when you go to church, when you spend time with the Lord throughout the week and you're trying to be intentional with him and then you come in, you know what, the pressure's off of Mm-hmm. John and Scott as our teacher, the pressure's off. I, I get to go and look around and see, knowing that in this room there are people that know him and that, and that don't, and there are people that are that are in desperate need for truth and a reminder of who he is, and we get to do communion together mm-hmm. and celebrate together, and we get to we get to you know engage in some of those sacraments and baptism and some some of that stuff. But at the end of the day, I've just gone to a service if I'm not careful, mm-hmm. and and we don't want you know. Of course, we live in the Bible Belt. We've lived in places where there's not a Bible Belt, but it's it's one of those things where, man, you just want people to take steps beyond a row into life. I mean, our triangle is yeah. with Jesus in community on mission, and and that that can't just be encapsulated in in an hour. Yes, uh, no matter how great our services are, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. It's interesting because there's, as is often the case, kind of two ditches that you can run the car off the road into. One is to get into the box checking, mm-hmm. you know, and I've heard plenty of that over the years. I've heard many a person brag, I've not missed a yeah. Sunday in church for <laughs> right. 52 years and mm-hmm. counting. And I don't really understand that. You know, yeah. it's like when I go on vacation, I'm so not say, looking, I'm not looking around to find a church, you know, yeah. to go to. Yeah. It, it'll Are be you fine. Serious? Yeah, strangely enough, <laughs> newsflash, when Scott's at the beach, he does not find a church to go to on Sunday morning. Um <laughs> Then there's that other ditch, though, that says, hey, you know, sitting in a deer stand or sitting at the beach or going sure. out yeah. on the lake or whatever, that's my church service. And mm-hmm. yeah, and I see errors in both things, yeah. and I think we see both errors in our culture. And you'll hear people say, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm spiritual. I don't like going to church, mm-hmm. but I've got it all sorted mm-hmm. out. Me and God are good. You're missing something key about yeah. being a part of the body of Christ, which is not only this gathering of believers uh, to worship together, Mm -hmm. there's something about worshiping together, but also to serve Mm -hmm. together as an act of worship and to bring your gifts to the table. So if you're just a Mm non-participant, you don't show up, you're demonstrating to your kids that not only do they maybe don't have anything to offer, but they don't need to offer what they have, even if they had it, you know? So I think our kids are watching what we're, what we're doing, obviously more than what we're saying, like we've talked about on here. And so if, if you fall in that category of average person goes to a church service, like 1.4 times Mm -hmm. out of four weekends a month, it's important to pay attention to that reality. What are we demonstrating through what we do? That's actually a value to our family. And there's obviously a lot of impediments that can get in the way from travel sports to travel sure. cheer to travel this to travel that to we're just tired and don't want to go. We just have excuses. Yeah, we yeah. come up with plenty we're of tired. excuses. Well, and even even this piece where there are plenty of people that are anti-organized religion and church and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, you can't read that book and go, I love Jesus, but I don't love his bride. Yeah. And it's like, right. well, yeah. actually, you're kind of a part of it, but you're not yeah. acting like it. Right. And, and we gather together corporately to to worship God to to be reminded and to go back out to yeah. it's, in some ways it's it's just like a quick fill up mm-hmm. you know and it's and, and it gives us an opportunity to serve people mm-hmm. uh, there's so much activity that's happening in ministry teams it's not the only thing that happens from a mission standpoint in our church there's plenty of ministry teams that happen outside of this but man there's a mm-hmm. we've got people everywhere trying to make sure that we're there to meet needs help people take their next step with Jesus um but man, that is that's a powerful time. I mean, think about COVID when we had to sh- when mm-hmm. we were shutting down, yeah. and we were doing this stuff online, and we still have people there slowly making their way back. But yeah. I remember the ache in my soul when we we'd all you know, we'd be up there and, mm-hmm. and Jared be up there, mm-hmm. and we'd be in you know we'd have different rooms, and you guys are doing some singing on the stage, yeah. and, and we're all and it's like when we finally got back together, man, it was like. I was overwhelming. Yeah. It feels so good, and there yeah. are people that you know we we just made the decision, you know, hey, listen, there's all kinds of 
feedback and, and, and criticism that we get, but we went, there are people that are hurting yeah. mm-hmm. and lonely and it's been hard. And that season was really hard for people. I talked to a guy yesterday that his depression for the first time happened during mm-hmm. COVID oh, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and he struggled and man, we didn't have church, you know, it's, and, and yeah, you can watch it and it's fine. But man, I mean, yeah. there's something about being, being there, being in it and seeing somebody get baptized and, and getting to say hello to people that are at the same doors mm-hmm. every time, mm-hmm. you know, to, to be blown away by a, a new song that we sing or a song that we've written as a church to, to get firsthand together, learning together with your family or with people around you. Mm-hmm. It's powerful. And, well, and like any discipline, it bears good fruit if yes. you'll do it. Yeah. So, you know, you you experience this. We we work on Sundays mm-hmm. a lot, and so mm-hmm. spouses end up having to bring yeah. kids yes. to church and things like it's, that. But it's hard, you yeah. know. Yeah. This past Sunday, it was like negative four. John said when he got yeah. in his truck, yeah. I was preaching <laughs> out of town, and it was cold where I was, but it was <laughs> negative four. And it's hard to get out of bed and get sure. kids out of bed yeah. and make right. breakfast and keep your coffee warm, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and get in the car. And oftentimes, people get in a fight on the oh, way to church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Satan does his best work on the way to Absolutely. church and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> get Smile. Him, get him checked into kids ministry, and then walk all the way down the hall, and then find mm-hmm. your seat. I mean, yeah. there's. But there's benefit yeah. to it. And I think as, as kids see that, man, it's a high priority that mm-hmm. yeah. the assumption is we're going to go on Sunday mornings and we're going to participate mm-hmm. in this service builds something into kids that's really, really valuable and really, yeah. really helpful. Yeah, Hebrews yeah. says don't neglect meeting together. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Don't give up. Exactly. You know, the power of encouraging each other, spurring each other on toward toward love and good deeds. Yeah. I mean, that's that's part of why we do this, you yeah. know. Yeah, and I also think it's easy to isolate nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have so many things that are vying for our kids' attention. Like, I just think about social media and stuff like that. It's very easy to sit on the other side of a screen yeah. and feel like you're a part of something yeah. when in reality you're not actually having conversations. Yeah. We just talked about this on the women's podcast because we walk away from every one of those going, we just had a really good face-to-face conversation Mm -hmm. about something. And it wasn't just like this little comment that was flippant or flattery or whatever. It was a good, healthy, deep conversation. and We walk away better for it. And so while, yes, watching church online is great and it's great that you have that resource when you need it, meeting together provides a whole other layer of biblical yeah. community mm-hmm. and people being able to invest in your kids. Yeah. And then you all take that home and have conversation about it. Like there's, there's a lot more to that, I Absolutely. think, than just going. Yes. Absolutely. Our kids are going to pay far more attention to the disciplines that we quietly employ yeah. in our life than they're going to pay attention to the things we tell them they should and they ought to do, yes. yeah. especially if we're not actually do it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> they, they pick up on that really quick. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, you, we've got kids like we've talked about of varying ages, you know, yours are younger. You, you've got some that are younger and one that's older. I've yeah. got them all across the board. What are the ways that you've helped your kids learn to serve within the context of the church? Um, you know, I, I think about meal pack mm-hmm. being one of the very first yeah. things that when we moved back here in 2017, that's something my youngest, who was like yeah. four, you know, mm-hmm. could put a little hairnet on. He could sit yeah. there and he could kind of help mm-hmm. me at the end of the line. I always am in charge of the, I don't know why, I'm always in charge of the tape. And I'm yeah. so bad with that <laughs> dumb tape gun thing. Yeah. I get it all messed up and then the it's tape fun. gets torn up all over the place. And yeah. But uh, I think it's maybe because they just want me to be the one who's stacking the boxes. Yep. Or like, we yep. probably yep. can't mess that up too bad. Yeah. But yeah. but it was a really good, like, vivid illustration of, like, here's something that Bo, at a really young age, and he's done, I think, every year since, you know, now it just is something that he goes, man, I can go, I can be a part of this with the family. Mm-hmm. And the conversations get more poignant as he grows older. Yep. And then the older ones were all obviously a part of that, and they got a kick out of it. That's a cool entryway. Yep. And now yeah. as my kids have gotten older, they all serve in kids ministry Mm -hmm. around here in different capacities, but I can see how it's shaping all three of those older ones who are participating in kids ministry. What are, what are some things you guys have? Yeah, we've, we've done meal pack as well. Um, do you mean more in the context of just at church or Or just showing them how to serve as the church doesn't have to be in the building on a Sunday morning. Yeah. There are things that we try to do every once in a while periodically just where we think about, you know, I'm just in connection with a lot of people. And so there are people that have gone through hard times. And so I may go, Hey, it's a Saturday morning. We're going to write these cards to these five people. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to run by and get some flowers at 
Whole Foods or whatever, or maybe something, and we'll just drop them by people's houses and just, you know, just different things where there's a family in our church the, that lost her son to suicide. And so we went by there and dropped off some flowers and they brought, they actually had us come in. And so, you know, they, we, we sat with them for a while. She made them cookies. I mean, just all this kind of stuff, but just trying to remind them that it's not about them. And even, mm-hmm. even as we look at their, their stuff, we just went through Christmas stuff and you're going, mm-hmm. they got more stuff mm-hmm. and we're going, Hey, what are we going to keep? Mm-hmm. And what are we going to bless? And so bringing those things up here to help me through him, mm-hmm. um, they now are doing, they now have like uh, allowances. And so, nice. and so what we try to do is, you know, they get all the work done on Saturday, then they get paid. If they don't, then they don't. But the reality is we hope that they get it done so that way then they can bring their offering mm-hmm. to the offering tins that are there. Um, you know, and so we'll, we'll we'll drop their offering off and then we'll grab communion because I got one in fifth grade. And so we'll do communion outside and then pray and then send Emmy in on it to, to children's mm-hmm. stuff or whatever. But even just trying to think through how do we how do we make sure that we are appreciative of those who serve. And so mm-hmm. we got some great children's workers and, and student workers. And mm-hmm. so... Um, and I try to every once in a while just go, hey, listen, I'd love for you to write three cars to, yeah, to somebody. And so she, you know, Emmy loves McGee Pool and Andre Riddick. I mean, she, you know, she <laughs> she loves seeing them, and and you know, and and, yeah. and so just giving them a chance to think through, man, these people are here because they they love you and they they want to serve Jesus and they want to serve you. And so mm-hmm. so we try to do things like that. We'll pray for different ministry areas or teams or things that are going on on Wednesday nights or whatever. But those are some of the things we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I remember when Ashlyn got to do meal pack for the first time, she was so excited yeah. because she had to go into, you know, childcare, which yeah. I'm very grateful for, by the way. It's, sure. it's called um, childcare. It is child pack, for, just for the record. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, it, that was a game changer for her. And this will be the first year that Ella gets to do it. Mm. So she's super excited yeah. for two reasons. One, she gets to do what her sister's done, but also she gets to be a part of it because yeah. we've all talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that side of it. I think also at Christmas time, there's for my kids right now, they get presents, right? Yeah. They're super excited about that. And I'm yeah. like, that's great. But let's look a little bit outside of ourselves. So mm-hmm. things like Christmas joy are a big I'm deal. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, because they get to to see like I this is what my Christmas looks like and not yeah. everybody gets that. So I can give this to someone else. Yeah. So those are like action things that they can do. We also pray for people. I'm glad that you said that because yeah. that's one of the things that right now I'm really – like we pray with our kids all the time and we pray for them to be able to have opportunity to be kind to other people. Yeah, that's right. And we pray for them to learn to pray for other people. Yeah. Mm, and those are good. the big things for them right now because that's how an easy way for them to serve at their yeah. age. I'm yeah. also trying to convince Ashlyn to be a little tiny worship leader for the little kids. She's a little nervous. But nice. I mean, there's stuff that like even in third grade you can do. So yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot. I don't know. Yeah. No that's pressure. Good. I mean, dang. Well, <laughs> the I shadow. Mean, it's Does the like shadow reset room? Does the shadow you know. reset room? I'm trying to make Bo be a preacher, but I'm afraid he's headed more to the stand up comedian room. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. That's good. That's with amazing. That's good. What about, I was thinking about this, like, what about the way we talk about church mm-hmm. with our kids? Mm-hmm. And that can mean both the act of going to a worship gathering on a Sunday morning and body of Christ as a whole, big C church, all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. What comes to mind for me is that if, if our kids have witnessed and watched us do this consumer mindset, church shopping thing, Mm -hmm. you know, which again, I think is a sport here in central Kentucky. There are, I talked to so many people who bounce around, not only bounce around from one church to the next, but they attend multiple churches, which I think is the weirdest thing ever. I just, how hard is that? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense <laughs> to me. I'd be happy to hear somebody explain it to me that doesn't. If you could explain it to me and not use the phrase, well, we just go where we get this for yeah, at preference. that church. Oh, we get this at yeah. that church or we, get, yeah. or we get fed there, but we mm. like the worship there. It all comes back to these preferences, yeah. and that teaches our kids something that yeah. I, I don't think we can find or defend biblically. Yeah. We won't find it in the Bible, and you certainly can't defend it that way. So uh-huh. that's just a little pet peeve of mine. But the way we talk about church matters. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so if I'm walking away saying things like that, like, I really hate it when they sing that song or I don't uh-huh. like it when that person's yeah. on stage or can you believe they showed that video or what, yeah. whatever that is. 
that communicates something to mm -hmm. to our kids that the goal is for you to get something when you go yeah, versus right. to be a part of something that you get to participate in and serving. Yeah. So what else comes to mind in regards to how we talk about church? Well, you said it's a discipline, which it is. I think mm -hmm. that's a good thing to be upfront and honest about because there are Sundays where it's very difficult to drag yeah. yourself out of bed and go. Sure. So honing that discipline is important. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, though, I think showing them that there's value to corporate worship, for example, mm -hmm. and I don't just mean music, just yeah. in general. There's so much value to getting together um, both as a child and as an adult I think is really helpful because you're right. It's not about what you get. It's about getting to mm -hmm. worship. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. Mm -hmm. We get to come together and yeah. worship the Lord and showing them and modeling for them that worship is important and it's an important rhythm, I think is really healthy. And we talk about that a lot at my house. And again, it's not just music related. It's just we get to worship the God who created everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a have to. No. Sometimes it's a have to to like drag yourself out of bed, but it's mm -hmm. never a have to to get to worship yeah. him because mm -hmm. look at what he has done. Yeah. So if we can communicate that to them, Absolutely. I think that'll get ingrained over time. Yeah. Heaven's going to be a big picture yeah. of a lot of people yeah. and we're going to be gathered. Yeah. And, and you, you, you think about, I mean, some of us, we've been in different places, you know, one of the places that struck my, struck to my mind was Albania and it's a longer story than this, but I just met with a girl. I, met a girl on a bus, a teenage girl, and she, I had my own Bible and I was reading and she, you know, and it was, it was just this, I ended up giving it to her because they had one Bible for their town. Mm. And, you know, the, there, there's so many places where there aren't churches or there aren't great churches, good godly biblical churches, or people have to walk a long distance. And it's like, yeah. hey, when it rains here in Kentucky, we're going to have an 18% uh -huh. decrease on attendance because uh -huh. it rained. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no wonder we're soft. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, that resilience won't serve us yeah. well when yeah. things get dicey. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so going, man, we get an opportunity, and, and we'll tell our people, you know, tell my kids all the time, I mean, listen, it, there's a lot of people that come here. There's a lot of people, and she, and she know they know coming home because I, I spend time with a lot of people just like you all do, that not everybody's just exactly walking with Jesus, and yeah. that's, that's, that's the beauty in, in mm -hmm. God's family, that we're, we're all working together, no one's arrived, and and sometimes people need help, and 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 we move toward those places, and 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 we love people, and and you know we just we just you know we just got to you know say see you later to you know an elder here, and mm -hmm. who it, it's one of those things where you can step back at, at that and being at that visitation and thinking about just some of the godly men, you know, Buddy Mossberger, mm -hmm. Guy Colson, um, so many that have been around here that we're standing on their shoulders. Yeah. The decisions that they made along the way that put us where we are That's right. is is amazing. You know, you, I had another conversation with somebody last week that they they were talking about Broadway and and Broadway's willingness to send some families. I think around thirty to start our church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they where there was nothing. Yeah. You know, and to go, they were pioneering something that I don't know any thirty any of their thirty names, but I'm so grateful for their faith mm -hmm. to step out and. And we get to be a part of a healthy church, and we get to sh we get to show our kids that. And mm -hmm. again, doesn't mean we're perfect. We have plenty of right. things that we got to work on, of course. But man, there's nothing like the local church when it's running right, and we are really striving to honor Him. And so, why wouldn't you want your kids to experience that? Mm -hmm. And the beauty about what we do is there's so much intentionality between our little kids in preschool, yeah. our, our elementary school kids. Our mid, we have middle school for middle school sake, and then we have high school. And you know, just we, we have all these areas where we are we are really trying to do our best to bring what we can to supplement what's happening at home. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't have it, then you know what? This is the next best yes. place for you to get it. Yeah. And so why wouldn't you be here every week? And why wouldn't you why wouldn't you show your family that this ain't this ain't a spoke on a wheel for us. This is a hub. Jesus is the hub and, and this is just this just an all skate that we do. This mm -hmm. is who we are. We love the church, we love people. Yeah. We're gonna give we'll do meal trains for people or we'll give money this way or we'll go serve this person here. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll receive when we have to receive too, because it's 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 so much bigger than a hey nine thirty this is when we meet and eleven fifteen this is when we meet. it's about it's about what we get to do together in this movement of God to bring the gospel to people. That's yeah, one what of the we're one after. of the dangers that can happen, especially in a big church like ours, where there's really specific ministry to certain demographics, mm -hmm. is that we lose sight. We can lose sight of the multi generational sure. 
um, importance of being around people who are ahead of you, behind yeah. you, beside you, all that kind of thing. And it's real easy to adopt a consumer mindset yeah. when you feel like everything's being programmed directly mm -hmm. to you. And yeah. so youth ministry is actually a really new thing. It's only really been around yeah. since like the seventies, yeah. you yeah. know? And so who knows, it may not be a thing 20 yeah. years from now, who know, whatever, but there'll still be young people and old people in church together, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And so how we do that can change over time. But what shouldn't change over time is that we're gathered together using our gifts and serving each other and serving outside of the body. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, stands out to me is how important it, uh, it is for us to continue to model a lot of what you talked about. And not We don't have to talk about it a ton, but yeah. I think it helps our kids discover their gifts yeah. and yeah. where they can yeah. play. And there's two distinctions. There's what needs to be done, and then there's what you're uniquely gifted yeah. to do. Yeah, that's right. And at different times, you need to be doing both of those things. You know, yeah. if the building's on fire, you don't need to ask if you're gifted to carry a bucket of water. Yeah. You just right. need to grab a bucket of water <laughs> and throw it at the building. Yep. <clears throat> but when you're not dealing in crisis mode, you should be walking around looking yeah. for what is it that God has uniquely gifted me to do and how can that be leveraged to serve in the church and to serve the church. So just as an example, as you guys are thinking – I I don't know that I'm specifically like gifted in such a way that you know I should go mentor a young man in this in the school system, but I do because it's yep. a need. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I don't talk a ton about it. My kids know that I do it, and over the course of several years, especially a couple of my boys have joined me in helping serve this family, you yep. know, in different ways, shapes, and form. And they just know that that's something that on a weekly basis I'm engaging with this young man and we've tried to help their family over the years. And so there's nothing uniquely, you know, that qualifies me to go right. do that. Mm -hmm. I just do it because it needs to be done. And also God has gifted me with the gift of teaching, you know, yeah. and so they see me use that and leverage that on a right. daily mm -hmm. basis. When I think about my kids, I can see in one of them who's way more introverted pretty good with technology and things like that. And so he helps like run sound for our yeah. kids ministry stuff around here. You know, I think of another one who's very extroverted and relational. He leads, you know, a small group of like third grade boys, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And so how do you think about helping your kids both? There's certain things just need to be done. We don't need to worry about whether we're gifted to do it or not, mm -hmm. but also let's help you discover what is it you're gifted to do? Sounds like you've got one that might be a Worship yes, leader. potentially. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. She loves to dance, and there's a lot of dancing involved. So oh, sure we'll is see. down there at Kids Ministry. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, my five year old, she's extroverted. Mm -hmm. So right now, there's not a whole lot of opportunity for her to do stuff. Mm -hmm. But I can totally see how down the line she's going to be one of those people, yeah. mm -hmm. persons that can just talk to anybody. Yeah. You know, yeah. nobody's a stranger. So it would not shock me if, as an adult, she's someone who opens her home to people just because she's comfortable yeah. talking to anybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things, this is nonspecific, but just to state it, one of the things that we have to remember, just like our kids, like we're stewarding them well, the yeah. gifts that they have and the gifts that we have, yeah. we're also responsible to steward because they're not ours. And I think a lot of times when it comes to serving, we think, well, what am I good at and what, what will I feel fulfilled by? Yeah. And it's not ours. Right. Like, we have to go into it with that mindset. And I think the same is true for our kids. We have to go into it with the mindset of whatever they've been gifted with. It's not so that they love it and enjoy yeah. it. It's yeah. so that they give back yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, it's if it's we're fun always... when you can do it. But it's, yeah. fun when it, it's fun when it's enjoyable, but it's not yeah. always. I mean, Yeah, if we're always thinking in the context of how am I being fed? How am I receiving? Right. Am I being fulfilled? Is this really doing it for me? Yeah. That's the wrong kind of framework right. to constantly yes. be living in. And so... I think it's just valuable even when you're serving at church using your gifts. You may be running a camera. You may be cleaning mm -hmm. a bathroom. You may be yep. rocking a baby. Yeah. You may be parking a car, whatever that may be. For if you're doing that and your kids are at home and they're showing up an hour later, whatever that is, for them to know why you're not there. Yep. Yes. You know? And then also bring your kids along with you in the context where mm -hmm. it's safe and okay for them yeah. to be around and see you do that. Yeah. You know, A lot of our kids as staff, you know, people, they're around, they, mm -hmm. they see us oh, doing yeah. stuff. We got to yeah. bring them with us sometimes. And mm -hmm. they sit out there in the auditorium while we're running through things mm -hmm. and all that. kind. Of, and I think there's real value in them just being exposed yeah. to yeah. that. And so an encouragement to parents would be number one, if you want your kids to serve, then 
you better serve. Model you better it. model it. You better <laughs> serve. <laughs> yeah. And then talk to them about it, mm-hmm. you know, and let them get the opportunity and the freedom to start serving as they grow and, mm-hmm. and get older. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, if you think in context of, you know, obviously this is going to appear relatively self-serving, and I don't know that we can avoid that, but if you were to challenge parents, you know, mm-hmm. around maybe one or two things that you see that, man, if you would, if you would value church in this way in your life, uh, what would those things be? You know, I mean, it's, we've already talked a little bit about just, I think if people would build more consistency into attending worship on Sunday sure. mornings into their life, they would see significant change mm-hmm. in their own life and in the lives of their kids and their families. Doesn't mean everything's going to be all sunshine sure. and roses and sure. unicorns, but yeah. I think oftentimes we bring too much expectation into one church service and not enough expectation into what hundreds Mm -hmm. can accomplish over the course of time. Mm -hmm. And preachers do this all the time. Like we, we want every sermon to be the earth shattering, you know, world altering sermon, but we underestimate what just being consistent for 10 years accomplishes. Mm -hmm. And so I think if parent as parents, if we can see that value in our lives of attending being there, being present, being that being being a normal part of our our rhythms, we'll see transformational things happen in our families. Anything else stand out to you guys? I mean, I, the, if if I'm a Christian parent, this is hard. It's hard to do anyway. Yeah, but it is. you're going. I I I, I need support, mm-hmm. and I want to I want to make sure that what I'm saying is true. And and there comes a time when our kids are going. I've heard you, and mm-hmm. I, and you sound like Charlie Brown's teacher, mm-hmm. and and I, and so it's important to put them around other yeah. godly people, leaders, uh, students, and children's leaders um, that are saying the same things, mm-hmm. you know. And the reality is, you could you could get your kid, and they could show up in a group, and that group's not great, or that leader's not great. And you know what? If if you feel that way, then you should talk to our staff mm-hmm. and figure out if there's some adjustments need to be made or anything that we need to coach into your kids, but. The reality is just by being in proximity with other believers that are hopefully are chasing the same things, mm-hmm. seeds are being planted. And you got a window of 18 years. And again, I know that at the end of the day, this this belongs to the Lord. He is the one that's going to open up the door. He's the one that's going to going going to to show himself to them. But if we can do what we can to seed that ground by putting them around great people and they can have opportunities to, to serve in ways, and whether that's the block or or mission trips or just mm-hmm. even the ways that we practice that on our own with people uh, that we care about, just modeling. We just care for each other. And there are times where they're, they're in need. And so we have, and so we give, but you know, I got to do four mission trips with my oldest daughter and man, I'm not kidding you. Um, it's a game changer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember we first, we got there the first night and, and so they're like, Hey, we're going to go out into the, the courtyard and there's all kinds of Jamaicans there. And, and, and and so one of the things that one of the rules that I got from my wife before we left because she was like twelve years old when she went she's like she didn't leave you mm-hmm. so wherever you if you guys are building a house she's building with you if you guys are digging over here yeah. <laughs> she goes with you yeah. you understand me I mean yeah. I'm like yeah yes ma'am and so <laughs> and so literally she puts her stuff down she's twelve and I put my stuff down I come out I can't find her. <laughs> You're I'm like, like I'm already, day one. Sarah's already going to have to kill Day me. one. And so I'm like, hey, have you guys seen Avery? And they said, hey, I think she's outside in the courtyard. And I go out, and she's got a, she's got a Jamaican little baby in her, in her <laughs> arms, and she's already talking with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, I mean, listen, <laughs> whatever I did that week. Yeah. Yeah. But what I got to see yeah. God do in her. Yeah was powerful. Yeah. And we have these opportunities here at our church and and taking your kid with you to a trip and not every trip is going to be is going to make sense and there's age requirements for some but but even starting with just meal pack and going mm-hmm. hey this fun that we're having with all this music that's playing and we're out at this table mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. every bag is is going to end up in somebody's right. somebody's lap and on somebody's plate and we get to do this. You know, that's a beautiful thing that reminds them that, Hey, God is bigger. And we have so much as a nation, regardless of what's going on and as a church. And so it's, it's our job to continue to bless and serve and care for those, even if we don't see them 
until heaven, you know, mm-hmm. that's our a cool thing. Our kids over the years have seen me, especially, you know, go on mission trips and things like that when they were younger. And then as they've gotten older, similar yeah. approach of took Landry to Uganda, took Eli to the Dominican Republic. By the time I got to Silas and it was time to take him somewhere, he'd already done some mission trip stuff with our <laughs> church. So it was yeah. like, he got involved before I even got yeah. the mm-hmm. chance to take it got him in your own culture. Yeah, yeah. Your family. He's yeah. like, "Why well, I got to wait till I turn thirteen, like you did with the other <laughs> ones?" Because I was kind of the he's, he'd already gone. So yeah. um, it'll be interesting with Bo. He's he's still ten and trying to figure out that stuff. But mm-hmm. that that experience of going, not only have they seen me take risks and go places that otherwise you wouldn't go, because I'm not philanthropic enough by nature. Yeah. Like I'm like. Apart from Jesus, I'm not flying on a plane and going to yeah. you know some third world country or whatever. But with Jesus, that mm-hmm. changes everything. Yeah. So that's why I do these things and take these risks. Mm-hmm. And then they take that baton and run with it and want to do that stuff, whether yeah. I'm going or not. You yeah. know that that's valuable. But I think parents have to understand your kids are paying attention to the risks you're willing to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the church is going to provide you with plenty of opportunities to do things that are head scratchers to yeah. the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because of Jesus, it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And so if they see you participating in those things and being a part of those things, the likelihood that they'll engage in those things is yeah. much higher. Yeah, I I agree. And I think that that stands for even the simpler things too. Like this is going to sound really baseline, but like we should be, in the word every day, yeah. not just on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And your kids should see you doing that yeah. and not see it as a, well, I have to do this really quickly, yeah. but actually enjoying it and hungering for more yeah. of that. Because again, they're going to see it and go, oh yeah, I should mm-hmm. try that. You yeah. know, and, and hopefully those seeds, like you said, will start mm-hmm. to bear fruit. Same deal with serving. Um, we just talked about this on the women's podcast, so it's really fresh, but there are, so many excuses that I think we come up with, especially as parents for why we cannot serve in the church or outside of the church. There is something you can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if you pray for the opportunity for that, the Lord will show you an opportunity to do so. And it may be small and it may be grand. Doesn't matter. It's serving and it may be one time or it may be consistently, but your kids seeing you do that will also encourage them to want to do that. Yeah, we've seen a culture shift here. Like when I did children's ministry here years ago, we had tons of parents who were serving. Yeah. And I get it. Like you get into a season where you're like, man, I'm doing children's ministry all day, every all day. day. When I come here yeah. on a Sunday morning, I'd rather not be in there with a bunch of four-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. But something has shifted culturally. I think a value has shifted where now if you walk around in our children's ministry rooms, you will see adults in there serving, but you'll see a huge number of middle school and high school age yeah. kids who are serving, which is great, but also yeah. that doesn't mean that we don't need you in those rooms. And just mm-hmm. because you're going, man, I'm tired of kids, been around kids all week, we still have rooms full of students and kids that need to be yeah. And you don't served. have to serve your kids in the room. Sometimes yeah. just you Pick being in the room, room. Yeah. Going, all of a sudden they see like, man, mm-hmm. yeah. those kids love my mom or they love yeah. my dad. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. You know what I mean? Just to see that happening. Is, and if you don't want to do children's ministry, I promise we can use you in the parking lot. Yeah. You know, we can yeah. use you at a door. We can put you behind a camera. We can train you to do things. There are, there are ways that you can serve around here yeah. if you really want to do it. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, what it really comes down to, you just, you just don't want to. It, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And you, you <laughs> exactly. said something about taking risk. It's like, we, we do so much, you know, that we, we sacrifice so much for our kids that are involved in sports or activities. We do all these things and we go on vacations and sometimes it's just going, Hey, this is what we're going to do together. Mm-hmm. And maybe it takes vacation days or maybe it takes dollars out of your pocket, but like even just having kingdom assignment dollars that are outside of our, our, mm-hmm. our tithe and our offerings to our, to our church, we just created some money. And I don't care if you start with 50 bucks, you know, it's a, I know it can be a, it's, you know, it's almost a full tank of gas, but but you take those dollars and you're just asking the Lord for clarity on how you might use them mm-hmm. to help somebody. And 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 it's not always. Sometimes it's helping somebody with a with a mission trip, or sometimes it's you know we go hey we're going to go buy groceries for this these people. Yeah. And so and so when we go do that, they they get to do that with you, mm-hmm. you know. And 
the things that th- that our kids will remember yeah. that put them in a place where, hey, the world wasn't just revolving around you. And yeah, we had a lot of experiences where we played at the beach or we went mm-hmm. to Kings Island or whatever those or Disney or whatever it is. But but man, there's some things about our families growing up that they just really cared about other people, you know. And it's like it's like I think about John and John's dad, where John would, you know, his his dad would make him go serve lots of different people and families. He just he he needed John to know that life is not about you. And it's yes. so easy for us to get, I mean, as adults, yes. I get yeah. wrapped up in me. You, you don't realize how selfish you are until you get married and you have kids. But, but man, when you're a kid, you think it, you think it does. And, and when you give them an opportunity to, and again, it may be somebody down the street or it may be somebody in mm-hmm. a foreign country, but you, you see God's activity outside of your norm and you get to be used. And another thing too is, is helping our kids know that they can be, they can share what God's doing in their life, and they can they can be yeah. proud that they're a Christian. And you know, my my fifth grader, dude. I mean, they, we talked about her confidence, but she wears she wears Southland shirt. She wears she wears she wears her baptism shirt. You know, yeah. she, you know, it's new creation or whatever. I think it's what it is. She wears it, man. It, it ain't no big deal. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she'll tell her, her her teachers that she's praying for, or mm-hmm. you know, but helping them know, hey, listen, everybody's got a story, and. And, you know, if they made you mad today, that's okay. Let's pray for them. And, you know, you just never know if somebody might need a friend from you. And, again, we're not trying to put the whole world on all our kids' plates, but but to, to remind them that, hey, listen, everybody's got a story. And and what you have is so beautiful and powerful that just by you being a girl, you know, one of our prayers is for safe schools. And, God, would you help them be great students and leaders and friends today? Would you help them lead and not follow? Would you help them make a difference? Would you help them see see the things that you want them to see today in people. Mm -hmm. Just just little things like that that remind them that, hey, this ain't ain't about you. This Mm -hmm. is about Jesus and what he wants to do in and through your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think evangelism is something that's modeled as well. You know, I'm going, you want to see your perception change, and this happens all the time, every week. When somebody goes, yeah, I'll come to church with you this Sunday Mm -hmm. and, and sit in there, all of a sudden, you know, people get really concerned, like, Okay, how's the yeah. parking lot going to be? What's the children's going to be like? You, you better, better, you better, better you gotta pick be a, the right songs. Yeah, right. You better pick the right songs. <laughs> right. Nickel better right. you know, not make them mad. And, you know, whatever it is, all of a sudden you start seeing through the lenses of that person. And yeah. so I think when our when our kids are a part of a church that reaches lost and broken people, like as yeah. we're recording this, 52 people have been yeah. baptized yeah. here in 2024. You know, that's more than some churches see in a decade, yeah. you yeah. know, so... Our kids need to know how unique that is and how yeah. special that is and how important that is. So one of the things I love that happens, and then we'll start to wrap up, is you know at the end of our worship services when there's baptisms, yeah. you know, and everybody, let's sit down. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's lunchtime or not, if Nickel yeah. went long or Weiss went long or whatever that is, <laughs> we're going to sit down and celebrate this yeah. transformation that's about to occur. And to see some of them that are so broken, mm-hmm. so overwhelmed, oh, or, yeah. or to see a student baptize a student. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it's such an easy thing for us as, as parents to go, hey, listen, did you see that? Do you know what mm-hmm. happened there? That kid prayed and served that kid and befriended them and eventually got to share the hope that they have, and yeah. this is where they are. You know, But just to see people's stories, to watch people clap and celebrate and go nuts for because it matters, man. Mm-hmm. Heaven, heaven rejoices, and we should too. And so, yeah. so there's something beautiful about getting to sit on the front row of what God's doing in our culture yeah. through our through our church. That if you don't show up, you won't you you won't you won't capture it, and it and, and it won't feel the same if you're watching it on TV. I was yeah. at a church preaching this past weekend, and they had just opened up their new building not that long ago, and. So I was walking around just checking it out because I hadn't been there since they had opened it. And they had a swimming pool that was like a swimming. It was like it was a baptistry that was like a swimming pool. Oh, I was like, whoa. It was huge. I was like, dang, man, that thing's that thing's big. And he said, yeah, we actually had trouble getting contractors that would build it this big. He said, but our whole point was is we wanted a normal size a uh, small group to be able to all fit in here. That's awesome. You know, so 12, we wanted like 12 people to be able to fit yeah, in here. So that. if one person from that group got baptized, we want to make sure that the whole group could get in there. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's awesome. That's, brilliant. that's perfect. Yeah. And they need it yeah. <laughs> because it's a church yes. that's reaching yeah. lost and broken people. Yeah. And so, but man, that, what a beautiful picture of yeah. what the church is. Like we're yeah. gathered mm-hmm. together celebrating Life, death, and resurrection. Yeah. Hey, this is all random. I'm just junk drawer stuff. But as we're thinking all the different ways, but J- Jesus promised another one of those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, gosh, it's. It, yeah. I brought. I, you know, my girls were not old enough to 
to serve, yes. but I, I brought them with me. And yeah. again, I don't know if that's the rules or not, but that's <laughs> what actually work here. Staff person card. But yeah. man, it was so it was so fun for them to get to see the joy yeah. and to yeah. see all of our people serving. And and those spots go quick. And so whenever we do it, you got to jump on it. But if you've got kids of age level that are able to be a part of it, what an opportunity, man, mm-hmm. to serve the least of these, but God, God sees them and we see them and there's so much joy in getting to do that. So anyway, just... I've been at football fields, baseball fields, basketball court, all, you know, all over the place. And I've seen it happen not only to my family, but to other families around when a, a youth leader will show up to someone's yeah. football mm-hmm. game or basketball game, whatever that is. And I've seen the impact that has on that family to go, man, this, this young man or this young lady just came out here on a Friday night and gave up three or four yep. hours to watch my son play football because yep. they love my son yep. is, is a big deal. Well, yep. here's the thing. You you can do that for someone. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You, know, you can do that for someone. And if you say, hey, as a family, we're going to watch so-and-so play ball this Friday night yep. or sing in a, you know, in a play or yep. do yep. a recital or whatever yep. that may be, it's because we're intentionally building into and investing in this young person because that's what it means to it's be. It's a together the thing, man. Mm-hmm. It's not a yeah. This faith's not private. It's it's completely public and Absolutely. communal. So yeah, it's important. Well, there's a lot we could say about this one. I figured we would today. So hey, you gave a couple commercials of the women's podcast. I, I noticed did. today Sorry. you slipped that in. <laughs> uh, but if the parenting uh, podcast has been helpful to you, just know we have other podcasts. We have yeah. Tell Me More. Tell Me More. You want to sing it? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm feeling a little deep today. Oh, I don't know if I, like I from I Greece. Do. I'm never going to hear it <laughs> another so. way now. I hadn't even thought That's thought not that. why we titled it tell that. Me more, tell me oh, more. There, you go. there we go. Have a car? That's twice. I got uh-huh. him to do it on... <laughs> I don't, know what, I don't know what the words are. I, was, I, was I terrible. do because, man, when I was in high school, every trip we would take, they would play that stupid movie, musical, whatever you want to call it, and all the girls would sing it. On oh, us. yeah, We'd man. Be well, what trips were you taking? High school trips with Brewster here. There's so many inappropriate things in I that know. movie. I know. I slowing down. I know. Reese, we'd watch Sandlot. That wow. was always yes, a big one. Yes, that was the one we Christmas watched. Vacation. We'd watch Christmas Vacation. on. So, yeah. Like the yeah. TNT yeah. version? Yeah, no, 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 no. We didn't have it back then. It yeah. was the real version. And yeah. Brewster, wow. this is me throwing you under the bus. <laughs> JR knows. He was there. <laughs> he was there. He knows. Man. Yeah, there's a lot happening wow. in Greece. Then Aladdin. So anything yeah, that involves right. singing, yeah, all the girls yeah, yeah. would sing on the bus. Be like, yeah. oh, my gosh, please be quiet. Yeah. But, yeah. So welcome. tell me more. Commercial for the for the ladies' podcast, the women's podcast, mm-hmm. and, and locker, locker room. room. Yeah, we, uh, we, we drop them on Fridays, and it's been fun, man. Yeah, and I don't know when any podcasts get released, dropped, or otherwise. So check them out. Find them somehow, okay. some way. Yeah. It'll hit your feed. I don't know. <laughs> we I love just, y'all. I just work here. Yeah, that's right. We love y'all. Join us next time on the Parenting Podcast. <laughs>